Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video of myself and Marta, where as always I am here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today we are going to kick things off with a very interesting rumour regarding Intel Xeon. So, we have a report to start off with today, as Serve the Home have a very interesting report on the existence of something by the name of Intel Xeon Gold U. Now, I have spoken pretty much ad nauseum about how successful AMD have been with Epic, and they have really been aggressively attacking the single processor server market, especially saying that single processor servers are a viable alternative, and they have pretty much reaped the rewards and had a pretty nice amount of success doing so. Now obviously I have also said ad nauseum that AMD have been taking away market share in the very important data center slash server sector from Intel and while of course Intel are still in the lead when you're talking a, as profitable a market as this even just a few percent is a lot of money and obviously when you're using it to your direct competitor obviously Intel would prefer that wasn't a thing. So basically what we have is that, at least according to Serve the Home, the Intel Xeon Gold U is basically a direct response to the Epic P series, which is a single socket processor. And according to the reports, that is exactly what the Xeon Gold U is as well. Now according to their sources, we have three SKUs at present. We have the Xeon Gold 6212U, the Xeon 6210U, and Xeon Gold 6209U. And those of you wondering what these parts actually are, they are essentially at their core cut down versions of the Xeon Platinums. But again, these are for single socket servers, which again is the market that AMD have been targeting very aggressively with a quite a nice amount of success. And we also have some alleged pricing as well. Apparently the 6210U is going to be about $1,500 and the 6229U is around $1,000, but well, I'll say between a thousand, between one thousand one hundred. They don't have an exact figure for this one, apparently. But in terms of specifications, we're going to be seeing twenty cores for both, and forty threads with for the sixty-two ten U, a two point five gigahertz base and three point nine gigahertz boost with one hundred fifty watt TDP. As a six twenty, they're going to have a base of two point one gigahertz and a boost of three point nine, and a slightly lower TDP of one hundred and twenty five watts. So just to give you a bit of context for what AMD are doing. Um, in this exact same market, the Epic 7401P, which again is a single core variant of Epic, is a 24 core part with a 2 GHz base and 3 GHz boost and a higher TDP and it does cost around $1000. So with the lower end one, it's pretty clear who Intel are taking aim at here. Very interesting stuff if this turns out to be accurate. So we are seeing some real competition from Intel here and this is why I always say that competition is a good thing. Even though Intel are still massively in the lead when it comes to data centers, AMD have still taken market share as I've already said and even that has woken Intel up and made them be like, oh okay, we actually, we actually need to try to compete against AMD now because they can't just let them go on this absolute tear and keep taking their market share away in this highly profitable marketplace. So yeah, this is again why competition is a good thing, but you will find a link to Serve the Home's full report in the description below this video. I would suggest you give it a read as it is quite interesting. So we have a bit of an update on that whole spoiler thing next. Now I'm sure you remember all of the kerfuffle about this security vulnerability which was basically affecting the memory order buffer. So it's not similar to Spectre and Meltdown, it is attacking a different area of the CPU. So we have a bit of a update from Intel on this as they have posted a security advisory about the spoiler vulnerability, which as you might recall was covered last month. So you will find a link to their 
uh, their advisory, should I say, in the description below this video. But basically, Intel are saying that, well, this particular vulnerability is a low risk, and they have put it as 3.8 points out of 10. And again, officially said in their advisory that it is a low risk vulnerability because not only would the attack need to be authenticated, it actually requires local access to hardware. So that obviously, you can see why Intel are saying this is a bit of a low risk. Now, they are still, of course, working on mitigations, and they are currently looking at any software fixes. Obviously, you may have heard the reports that there would be hardware mitigation required and all that sort of stuff, but Intel are still looking into the software side of things. So, yeah, basically, don't worry too much about spoiler because, yeah, it requires direct access to the machine. Anywho, let's move over to the Xbox One Digital. Now, as you may recall, there have been reports and rumours floating around the internet for quite a while about the Xbox One S all digital version, which is literally what it says on the tin, a completely diskless version of the Xbox One S, and would most likely be revealed quite soon on the Inside Xbox show in just a couple of days on the 16th of April. And now there has been yet more information on this from the German website winfuture.de, which basically runs exactly alongside the previous leaks from Windows Central. And their report pretty much confirms that, yep, we will be seeing the Xbox One S All Digital Edition come out May 2019, and it's going to come with copies of Sea of Thieves, Forza, and Minecraft in the box. And there's a confirmation of the price tag, which I would argue is one of the most important factors as to how worth your time this particular version actually is, and at least according to this report it's going to be about $250 US and €229, Euros, which if it is accurate, and again it is entirely possible that their information is out of date or just wrong or whatever, it obviously could be completely absolutely correct, but simply pointing out this isn't confirmed, but if it is correct, I would argue that's a little expensive especially considering that we have seen the Xbox One S go down pretty damn low in price with some no bu nice bundles with games and all that sort of stuff. So you are getting a few games with this, obviously, as I've already said, but I still think this is a little on the high side um, to basically completely not have any capability to do discs at all. But that's just my personal feeling. Whether or not something is too expensive is highly, highly subjective to your personal budget, all that sort of stuff. So... Personally, I think that at this price tag, it's going to be a bit of a hard sell. But let me know your thoughts, guys. If this price is accurate, which again, it might not be, would you buy it? So just as a fresh new consumer, say you are interested in this, but the price is at the hinging point, would you purchase it at that price tag? And my feeling is that's going to be a bit much for most people, given that we have seen the, you know, the full fat Xbox One S again go for quite cheap. So, we're going to finish things up with a little bit of an update on Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I'm sure you guys have seen the reveal trailer. It does look quite interesting, but it obviously <laughs> tells us literally nothing as well, other than the setting. And it does look promising. I will admit I did watch it and I'm, my interest is definitely peaked, shall we say. And we do have a release date of November this year. And you've also most likely seen the information that it is not going to have any microtransactions and most importantly no loot boxes as well now this is good don't get me wrong i mean it should this shouldn't be applauded this should be like that's the like, most basic stand that you can reach like yeah you're not nickel and diming us with microtransactions and loot boxes woohoo but it was important for ea to say this i think because obviously people are immediately going to think oh i bet this is going to have microtransactions after battlefront 2 that reputation, that feeling is well deserved. So EA were right to come out and say, look, it's not going to have that. Obviously, people are still cynical, and so am I. Despite the fact that I'm interested, I'm going to wait and see. I'm 110% not going to pre-order. I basically never pre-order, as I've said. Um, unless it's like a very, very small subset of developers, and I'm talking like two or three that I would trust to pre-order. And even then, I probably wouldn't. I'd probably just wait because it's a digital copy. It's not going anywhere. Um, so I still would advise personally against pre-ordering because it's EA, and I'm fully expecting a full fat season pass. And I know they're just going to be tempted to to 
maximise as much as they can because it's EA. So what I'm expecting is basically no content at launch and then or like loads of content cut off and and hidden behind a season pass or something is going on. But maybe I'm just being too cynical. But I'm glad that it's not going to have any microtransactions or loot boxes because they are definitely responsible for the microscope that loot boxes have been put under. Not that that's a bad thing by all, any means necessary. You guys know how I feel about microtransactions and loot boxes in full price games. So I'm interested, but cautiously interested. And I would say, let's just all wait. That's my personal take on it. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support is highly appreciated. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye.